name is Chelsea and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I am sharing my India Chords Readathon TBR. So this is a readathon that is happening all through the month of July, July 1st through 31st. So this is also going to serve as my July TBR. I am the team captain for romance for this readathon, so I have tried to stick to the romance genre for basically every single book that we are going to talk about today. And since we are doing the indie accords, this is a readathon focused on indie books. So that could be self-published, small presses, boutique presses, anything that is an indie is what we are really focusing on today. So for me personally, that means I'm going to be reading Presley's playing with the ring light. I'm going to be reading a lot of ebooks. So, first, to start off this readathon, we do have a group book that is going to be A Court of Honey and Ash by Shannon Mayer and Kelly St. Clair. This is going to be published by High Jinx Inc. Publishing, and this is a boutique publisher. This book is actually coming out on July 6th, so it will be perfectly timed for this readathon since it is going through the whole month. And because it is a group book, we do actually have a Discord for the India Chords readathon, and we have a room there specifically so that we can talk about this book together. And I obviously don't know much about many of the books here, but for this one our main character is going to be Allie, who is a half-human orphan fae, and the home of the fae Underhill apparently shatters and she is one of the only people that can sort of figure out what is going on, why their magic is going crazy, that kind of stuff, and I'm very excited to try this one out. Then we also have Team Reads. Since I am captain of Team Romance and I picked the romance team read. That is the one we're going with, and we are going to be reading Along for the Ride by Mimi Grace. This one is actually self-published by Mimi Grace, and I am very, very excited. This is, I believe, a new adult or adult romance that is going to be focused on a road trip. I do believe this is going to have some sort of enemies to lovers or rivals to lovers. I am very, very excited for it, and it does say that this has some content warnings for a deceased parent who died long before the start of the book, and for a verb pushy person who is romantically interested in the heroine but is not the hero. One thing I absolutely have to say that I do really really love especially about self-published books, I feel like this is where it happens the most, authors are pretty good about having some sort of content or trigger warnings either in the summary which is where I'm getting these ones or on their website about the book. Not all of them do it but it definitely seems to be more prevalent with independent and self-published authors. Next, getting into the actual prompts we have, the first one is I Do We Have an Accord, which is to read a book with pirates or is set at sea. And I'm going to be reading Our Bloody Pearl by D.N. Bryn. This one is published by Avos Publishing, and I'm not entirely sure if this is like an indie publisher or a self-published under a like title for a publisher because this book is the only one listed anywhere for Avos Publishing. So this one is going to have pirates, which is great for this prompt, but it apparently also has sirens. Um, there is something to do with like humans hunting the sirens, um, but then our main character who is a siren, I believe her name is Pearl, is going to be sort of potentially taken in by a group of pirates, and I'm pretty sure there is going to be some sort of romance happening from there. This one does have trigger warnings for mild gore due to carnivorous sirens and sensations of drowning. Presley is going to join us for some of this video, but our next prompt is out of this world or to read a dystopian. For this one, I'm going to be reading Love in an Undead Age by A.M. Jeever. This one is published by ZBZ-1 Press. So this one is going to be in a post-apocalyptic world that has a zombie virus going on and it is going to be a romance. Apparently our main character is going to come across an old flame during the zombie apocalypse and I don't think I've ever read a romance that is literally in a like dystopian or post-apocalyptic setting and so I'm very excited to see how this one is going to work out. The next prompt is for Everything Hurts, and that is to read a book with a middle-aged main character. I actually have two options for this, and I have not purchased either book on ebook or anything like that yet, because 
I wasn't entirely sure which one I wanted to read. I'm sure I have plenty of books that have middle-aged main characters, but they don't specify in the synopsis how old the characters are. And I believe for middle age, for this prompt, we are going with anybody that is at least mid-30s or older, so definitely just those ones that are older than the people you would typically see in YA and new adult romances. So like I said, I have two possibilities for this one. The first one is Grey Hair Don't Care by Karen Booth, which is self-published by Karen Booth. So for this one, our main character is going to be 47 and a makeup artist. And she apparently is newly divorced and runs into an old crush from college, and it goes from there. And I'm very, very excited for this one. And this actually is going to be part of a series. It looks like the second book just came out in June. And while this is not my second option, it is more of a companion novel, so people could actually read this one as well. It's called Brooklyn Monroe Wants It All. And our main character in this one is also in her 40s. She's going to be 42. So my second option for this one, though, is going to be 40 Love by Olivia Dade. Now, I do feel like Olivia Dade is a little bit more popular recently because she did publish, spoiler alert, last year with a traditional publisher. However, her There's Something About Marysburg series is independently published through Hussies and Harpies Press which actually could be a self-published uh, type of press, but all of those books do count. This is the second book in this series, but they are companion novels. You can read them either way. And I do know for sure in this 40 love one, our main female character is 40. This is going to have an age gap romance though, because it looks like our male character is going to be 26. But as long as everybody is an adult, I don't mind age gap romances. So this does look like it's going to be a summer romance. Our main character of Tess, who is 40, is an assistant principal, and our love interest of Lucas used to be a tennis pro and I think now works at the resort. If you have a preference on either one of these that you would like me to read, definitely leave it down below because like I said before, I can't choose yet. <laughs> Our next prompt is One Heart, which is to read an LGBTQIA plus book. For this one, I'm going with The Cardigans by Cole McCade. This does have some romance in it. It is tagged as romance. It implies that there is going to be some sort of romance in this, but it is also going to be a like mystery or crime serial type of thing. This is the Criminal Intentions series. It's going to be made sort of like like a crime TV show is what I'm assuming um, because of the fact that each book is actually an episode. So this is Criminal Intentions episode one, The Cardigans. So this is going to be about two men who are detectives working to solve a string of murders of queer young men. And it looks like the two detectives, one is Malcolm and one is Seung Jae, and it looks like they are going to clash and butt heads a little bit. But like I said, it is supposed to have some romantic vibes going into this, and there are more books in the series, obviously. I'm very excited to try this one. It's been on my Kindle for a while. The next prompt is The Journey Unknown, which is a book featuring a quest. For that one, I actually have a physical book. I'm going to be reading A Trial of Sorcerers by Elise Kova. This is the second Elise Kova that I'm going to be trying out. I read one earlier this year, which was A Deal with the Elf King, which was very enjoyable. That one was more fantasy romance. This one is more young adult fantasy, but again, there are going to be some romance vibes and stuff in here because that is something that she definitely does. This one follows Ira, who is a magician's apprentice. However, she accidentally kills someone and nobody wants her, um, but she does get invited to some trials. So there is going to be some sort of competition between the people who can do magic. Um, I'm counting that as a quest for myself because I do believe there is a reason why they are doing this and I'm very excited to try this one out. I mean, also, how gorgeous are these covers? <laughs> Presley picked a different book we're going to talk about and he wants to show you as well. But Elise Kova is a self-published author and all of her books are gorgeous. I actually did get this one in hardcover because her normal hardcovers, not special edition or anything, are gorgeous. Like, look at this. This is the normal hardcover of A Trial of Sorcerers. The next prompt is Hard Yaka, which is to read a book written by an Australian or New Zealand author. So I did a vlog um, earlier this year where I read three books by authors named Chelsea. And I read one book that I had never heard about before, 
and I gave it four and a half stars really really enjoyed it and it's part of a series so I'm gonna be continuing that series for this readathon the first book was eat pray die by Chelsea Field who is an Australian author the second book is the hunger pains the first book is about a woman who ends up being a food taster like can taste poisons and like drugs and that kind of stuff in food for rich famous elite type of people and there ends up being a mystery element in it because another food taster has been poisoned with something that nobody is sure what it is i really enjoyed that it's a very fun humorous type of mystery there is slight 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 romance vibes in the first one however it does appear that with each subsequent book in this series we get more and more romance so I'm going to be reading this one because I definitely want to dive back into this series and I'm hoping there is enough romance that it will qualify as well for team romance if not that's fine you do still get points based on things that you read even if they're not from your team the normal amount of points that you can get if you're reading an indie published book that is from your team's genre you get 30 points however if you read an indie published book that is not from your team's genre and still fits prompts you do get 15 points also if you just want to read a bunch more indie or self-published books that don't even fit prompts you still get 15 points so yeah I'm definitely going to be reading that one. The next prompt is You Are Not Alone, and that is to read a book that has an ensemble cast or a platonic friendship. And for this one, I'm going to be reading Persuasion by Jamin Eve and Jane Washington. This one is self-published by these two authors. This is the second book in the Curse of the Gods series. The first one was Trickery, which I buddy read with Lana, our lovely host for this readathon, a couple months ago. And yes, we are going to be buddy reading again. I am so excited to continue in this series. I do believe this one is again going to be a reread for both of us but it has been years since I've read these books and I never continued after this second book so I am very very excited about this this series in general is a reverse harem romance I do feel like that fits for an ensemble cast because we have a lot of characters however there is also a really really great friendship in these books it's going to be between Willa our main character and Emmy who is her best friend so it also fits for the platonic friendship because they have a great great friendship and this series in general or at least the first book follows Willa who is a dweller which is one of the lower class people in this fantasy world and she is very clumsy and is sort of like not necessarily cursed but it feels like that she has the worst luck and she and Emmy end up going to a school where they're going to learn how to serve the souls which are the higher class citizens the ones that when they die have the potential to turn into gods and this is a good thing for a lot of dwellers however like I said Willa has the worst luck and so while she is there bad things start to happen there is a group of guys who start to befriend her there's not much romance in the first book but it is a fantasy romance series the first book I do think has a lot of like establishing the fantasy world and I do believe we start to get into definite romance stuff in the second book and I'm very very ready for it and then the last prompt for this readathon is the little guy which is to read an indie middle grade and for this one, I think I'm going to read The Adventures of Penelope Hawk by Justin V. Gray. This is self-published by Justin Gray. And I actually got this with a Kickstarter. Um, I helped kickstart one of his graphic novel type of things, which I think was more YA than middle grade, but this one should definitely be middle grade. This one is going to take Penelope Hawk, it looks like, to the world of Marazia, the place where all children go each night when they dream. It's going to be a fantasy book. There is no romance in here. I do not find that a lot of actual middle grade books have romance. That is one of the non-tropes or things that you don't usually find in the genre, which is fine. Like I said, you still get points for books that you read outside of your team genre, but I think it was going to be almost impossible to find an indie middle grade that was also romance but I'm very excited to try this out because again it's been on my shelves for a little while it's one of the only books for this readathon that I have that's actually a physical book like I only have two of them so yes now one thing I usually do each time I do my TBR is pick a TBR bucket pick so I have a TBR bucket this here because I have too many TBR books 
for a TBR jar. So this includes all of my physical books and ebooks. And what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach in here and we're gonna keep going until we actually get an indie or self-published book. But I'm gonna add another book to my TBR because we're gonna be very ambitious with this TBR for this month. But I want to still do my TBR bucket. If I get anything that is not an indie or self-published book, we're gonna skip it, put it back in, and pick another one until we do get another indie or self-published book. Oh, you wanna pick? We'll let Presley pick. Oh, he picked a handful. Can you pick one? Pick one. No. No, okay, mommy do. Well, there's a trial of sorcerers. That is indie, but I already have it on my list. Okay, I think we might have one, but I'm actually not entirely sure if it is self-published or indie published just yet. Let me check. I don't think it is. I think it's a normal publisher. Nope, okay. I'm also finding a lot of ones that I've already read, um, but it wasn't a TBR bucket pick, so I'm taking those out as well. Oh, okay. This one, I'm pretty sure is. I bought it at a Phoenix Comic Con, um, and most of the time when I buy things there, they are self-published uh, novels or comics and graphic novels. And this one would be a novel. I don't know if it's romance, but we're going to add it on there anyway. Okay, let me just double check. Irreverent Publishing. This is definitely not a normal traditional publisher. Here is the paper. It is Evil's Unlikely Assassin by Jen Windrow. And like I said, I bought it at Phoenix Comic Con, so I actually have the book. Let me go grab it. Okay, so here it is. Evil's Unlikely Assassin by Jen Windrow. This one, I don't know if it's a romance. We're going with it though. So this is about a vampire who made a deal with an angel, it looks like. Yeah, an angel with attitude to hunt down vampires, werewolves, all that kind of stuff that goes bump in the night for 50 years in order to gain her humanity again. This one does look like it's gonna be less than 300 pages, so hopefully not too crazy to add into this TBR that I already had. But yes, definitely a self-published book, and I'm excited that we're going to read this one as well. And that is it. Those are all of the books that I am planning to read in July for the India Accords Readathon. I also, being the insane person that I am, created a spreadsheet of a lot of traditional publishers and their imprints. Basically, all of the big five plus some exceptions to the rule. So if you are joining us for the Indie Accords, that is a resource you can definitely use. I will also link my indie and self-published shelf on Goodreads down below. Those are all of the books that I have read that are indie or self-published. They have ratings, they have other shelves that they're attached to so you can sort of see like what genres they fit into. And then I will also leave the link to the Discord and the Twitter and the Instagram and the sign-up sheet for this readathon down below. You have until the end of June 28th to sign up for this readathon if you want to be in the running for the prizes. There are two prizes available, basically up to 30 Australian dollars from your Amazon or book depository wish list for an indie or self-published book. So yes, I believe that is everything. This is my entire TBR. I'm very, very excited counting down the days currently to this readathon. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up to let me know. Subscribe to this channel if you would like to see more videos. I do have videos up Tuesdays and Thursdays, so I will see you then. Bye!